So, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> I actually haven't been anywhere. What I mean is I haven't posted in a while. And you know how time gets away from you sometimes. So, uh, I have been busy though. I've been uh, doing Aircrete stuff, both theory and praxis. And uh, I have a lot of videos that I'm going to make shortly explaining various things and, and delving into various questions that pop up in the Air Creek community. Um, for example, pumping. That was a big one. I've been doing a lot of different pumps, a lot of different stuff, a lot of experiments, a lot of mm, information. So that'll be a video. Um, and let's see, people are asking about insulation value, and yes, I ran those tests. And uh, I had some personal questions like, uh, how much does a block of aircrete lose weight-wise between when it's wet and when it's completely cured? I don't know if that's an issue, so we might not even have an episode about that. Um, so let's see, pumping, R value, uh, very, oh, failure modes. I, I did a bunch of different failure modes, induced and regular. And we'll look at the way concrete looks, or aircrete looks, uh, when it's done. And by the defects, try to be able to identify what went wrong. So hopefully we can do it differently in the future. Okay, this is your basic baseline uh, sort of block. This is how they ought to look. Uh, you don't need to put numbers on it. That's only if you're doing experimental batches and you want to keep track of them. Along the sides, you will quite often see a little spalling where uh, perhaps it's stuck to the mold and because uh, maybe you didn't oil it enough. A uh, slight amount of surface cracking is normal um, but in general it will be very slightly less than perfect uh, and will often have like defects like in the corner like here. This is because somebody screwed, when they screeded it off this corner was low and if you want to avoid that defect you just j jab it you know, pack it with a little something so that, that that feature doesn't happen. However, it's fairly innocuous. You don't need to worry about it. Okay, now here we see a block with a small dip in the top. Uh, we're looking at perhaps a half an inch of uh, slump there. This is not at all abnormal, even with FM160 or other professional um, foaming agent. You'll see it a lot more with dish soaps and stuff, but this is actually quite normal. And anything that up to this point would be just a natural product of um, shrinkage, which all concrete does. Beyond this, uh, you're gonna start looking at a defect called collapse. This is starting into the range I would consider to be collapse. You see the interior is markedly dished. Um, you're looking at maybe half an inch of slump there. Uh, you can see perhaps a little excessive porosity around the edges. And uh, I would say this is still within the realm of acceptable. Um, but beyond this, I would say you need to start thinking about what you're gonna do to prevent this. Now this goes beyond what I would consider normal. Those first three were all within the acceptable range. But now you're looking at um, defects of over an inch. Uh, and this is on mostly due to either you're trying to stretch it too far, i.e. you're putting way too much foam in, or your foam itself doesn't have the right composition. If your foam looks like this after it's set, I'm going to say you better get right with Jesus because you are going to aircrete hell if you keep this up. Um, this particular case, um, I believe, was a result of not mixing the um, cement well enough. There was a lot of cement left in the bottom of the barrel, meaning there was very little in the actual mix, and you had what I would consider catastrophic uh, failure. Now this texture is caused by exposure to rain. The majority of the block is okay. It's just, you can see at the top, it's subsided uh, perhaps an inch or more, depending on how bad the rain was. Um, this isn't really a problem. It gives you a very interesting texture, but as most aircrete textures are later covered with a final coating, I would say uh, cover it. 
Now this is the opposite of the not covered defect. This is the defect that is caused by covering it, um, especially for an inexperienced person who doesn't realize that any weight you put on the tarp is going to cause a significant surface defect in the uh, final uh, brick. This is uh, what I call Friday afternoon error in that whoever cast this brick didn't even bother to scrape it even, they just left it as poured. Again, not a major defect and um, not really structural in nature, so um, grind it off if you don't like it. Now one that's suspiciously uh, perfect like this uh, is not uh, something you're going to see. This is something where if you need an exact dimension you make it a little bit bigger and all these sides can be molded nice and flat and the final size will be cut with a saw.